everyone. Welcome to a bright Saturday morning and this League of Women Voters Forum for Candidates in Grant for City Council. My name is Mary Santi. I live outside of the city and I will be moderating this forum. Tonight's forum is being taped by suburban community channels and will be available for playback on channel 16. Check for playback times at www.fcctv.org and we will also provide a link to the replay on our Facebook page for League of Women Voters when it's available. The League of Women Voters does not support or oppose any candidate or any political party. We sponsor forums like this so you, the voters, can have an opportunity to hear the candidates, hear what they think on the issues that are important to you. Uh, questions are being collected from the audience, so if you want, need a card, hold your hand, or if you have one, raise it and the ushers will come and pick it up. We also got questions online. So we invited all the candidates to be here as part of the forum and all of the candidates are participating. And they are from the, from my right, your left, Jeff Keeper, Larry Lanou, John Rogg, and Lauren Setterstrom. Uh, the order for speaking will be alphabetical for uh, the opening statement, and after that, they'll be random. Candidate, there's uh, timers up in front holding signs. They, they will give you a 30-second warning and then tell you when your time is up. You may finish the sentence. So we will begin with opening statements. Uh, candidates have a minute and a half for opening statements. So we begin with Jeff Keeper. Hello, my name is Jeff Giefer. I'd like to say thanks to the League of Women Voters for hosting this event, and thanks to you, the citizens of Grant, for joining us on this Saturday. Growing up, I lived in rural southern Minnesota, and I worked on my grandparents' farm. My wife grew up in the area, and when we married, we moved to Grant to get back to our rural roots. I am running for Grant City Council because I want to protect and preserve the quality of life in our community. If we are not careful with how we manage and plan for Grant, by keeping taxes low and limiting development, we risk losing the reasons why we enjoy living here. This is why I joined the City of Grant Planning Commission in 2016. I will vote against any measure bringing unnecessary public and water and sewer to Grant. I will work to maintain a conservative budget. I will listen to you and I'll use what you tell me to guide me. The last 20 years I've worked at General Mills as an IT analyst, working on projects collaborative with people all around the world people with different beliefs and skill sets. We did not always agree, but we got our jobs done without interrupting each other, tearing each other down, or suing each other. Unfortunately, our city council meetings have deteriorated to the point where this behavior is the norm. This behavior has to stop. It's time for fresh new faces in the city council and putting the welfare of the citizens first. As a council member, I will work hard, work cooperatively, and listen to you. Thank you. Thank you now, Larry Leno. Okay, good morning. I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters and the City of Matamidi for hosting this forum. Both Lauren and I requested that this forum be held in the City of Grant where we pay our taxes. Many of you not, may not be aware, but we're not allowed to, we would not have been allowed to use this facility, or our city facility, as our city council has denied the use of our town hall, uh, forbidding both 4-H and any other citizens groups from its use. That's why we're meeting here today. One need only to look at the upkeep of the 4-H uh, gardens, a lack of respect shown to its leader the 55 years, Joyce Wheelander, to understand uh, why our city is failing. Running for city council again after searching for a candidate that will stand up for the rights of the citizens that are incrementally being taken away. I'm sorry to say that most that would consider this position refuse to serve knowing they'd have to serve on the, with the sitting next to the council majority for the next two years. Some of these rights have been taken away are the right to assemble in our town hall and the right to speak freely at our council and planning commission without the threat of arrest if the majority does not approve of your content. I've been denied the right to use the city hall to organize a cert team, emergency response team, formation of a volunteer committee to review our failing roads, organize uh, 
flooding homes with the citizens of the grant and organize a steering committee for the uh, comprehensive plan. Our grandfather rights are being denied, our rights to our home occupation being restricted, our right to farmer grant being uh, a, put in a different direction, uh, and we're not being allowed to participate. John Rock. Good morning, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum, and thank you to everyone in the audience who are taking the time this morning to hear about what's important to the future of Grant. My name is John Rogg, and I'm running for Grant City Council. I've been a resident for, of Grant for over 11 years, and I'm currently serving as chairman of the Planning Commission. When the Planning Commission resumed sessions over two years ago, I decided to volunteer to help the city I love. Why did I decide to run for City Council? In the Planning Commission, I've had the opportunity to hear from citizens as to what's important to them. I've also had to make sure we adhere to the rules when we run the meetings. When I realized what the City Council does, I wanted to continue to help the city that I love in a different capacity. So I know, uh, or since I know how to help Grant in the Planning Commission, I can also help Grant on the City Council. If you're wondering what I do as a City Council member, first I would work constructively and respectfully with other City Council members. A good debate based on the issues is never a bad thing. Second, I would try to solve the inequity of the gas tax that we all pay at the pumps while not getting a dime for road repairs and replacement from the state. To get that money would, would require us to grow to 5,000 residents. The census is in two years, and if we do grow, that would, be, uh, that would be able to help our budget tremendously. Third, I would review the budget line by line to see if there's any waste that could be reviewed uh, and potentially removed to keep our taxes low while maintaining services to all the citizens of Grant. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for everyone being here. Thank you, League of Women Voters. Uh, I want to state I've been on the Planning Commission. I've been a Cable Commissioner, uh, four years in the Council. I've attended many watershed meetings, and I am a Charter Member of the Grant Heritage uh, Council. I have several concerns for the future of Grant. First of all, we have to keep our wells safe. Some of you may or may not know of the fiasco, the man dumping 300 Hydrovac trucks. Hydrovac trucks are used to suck up waste it also do sewer repair. I worked with Larry and we had the MPCA shut them down. However, the council majority wouldn't amend the ordinance. Okay, the, the other thing we, we need to do is no, uh, there's no use of town hall and they don't even put public comment on. So if there's a robbery in 110th Street, it would be nice if someone could share and say, hey, watch out. The third, comprehensive plan is no public input and there's leapfrog development can open us up to sewer and water and we've seen Flubs along, they've allowed a hockey rink, they've allowed a change the ordinance to allow for a supper club. This is problematic. And the last thing that I think is very serious is the majority uses the staff to retaliate against them, using lawsuits, inspections to intimidate those who oppose them, including examples of this are Hools, the Gast House, Michaels Construction, Joyce Wielander, and others. Joyce w was sent a letter by the city attorney because she had a hay rack in her pasture with a couple signs on it and they said she had a condition she had a artistic grouping and she needed to get a conditional use permit that was ridiculous thank you so we'll now turn to questions you've submitted but keep submitting them as we go along and they'll be answered uh, in a random order the first to answer this will be uh, Larry Leno what unique value will you bring to the city if you are elected well, I think the value is the same one I've been showing right along. I will stand up for the citizens' right, the right to farm in our community, the right to uh, speak at a uh, council without uh, the threat of being arrested. Uh, currently, we've restricted our public input and our public hearings. Uh, I got elected in 2014 on November 2nd. On November 6th, our city developed a policy and procedures to limit our participation as minority members. And so I will stand up for the rights of the citizens that are afraid to stand up and speak to our uh, city council members because they are afraid that they will be brought legal action against them. Thank you. Uh, I, would, I would like to rebut that. Uh, well, after everyone has answered, then everyone can have a chance to uh, give a rebuttal. Is that all right for everyone? Lauren Sederstrom. Okay. <clears throat> Unique value, I've, I've I have a lot of experience, like a planning commission, a cable commission. Uh, I see a lot what's going on. I've worked very diligently. For example, three months in a row, I wrote an ordinance change to s 
virtually outlaw hydrovac dumping. The 32-145 says there can be no wastewater discharge within 3,000 feet of a well. I live across the street from that place, so I know exactly what's happening. They brought 300 trucks, Lord knows what are in them, uh, and what, what we need to do is I need to continue my work, hopefully to get some of these things changed to, to keep the, the grants well safe. Thank you, uh, Jeff Giefer. Yep. Um, I want to keep Grant the same, and I do not believe we need any major changes, which is why I joined the Planning Commission 2016. Um, I want to work with the other council members and not against them to protect our scenic country of Grant and keeping the comprehensive plan the same and following our current ordinances. I will work with other council members to keep public sewer and water out of Grant um, other than what is needed for our schools and work to keep our taxes low. I'll help keep Grant the community we love. I'll work hard, work cooperatively, and listen to the citizens of Grant. Thank you. John Rock. Thank you. Um, unique, uh, unique value that I will bring. Um, I'm an engineer. And as part of the Planning Commission, the chairman, I've learned that when you look at the ordinances, uh, when see people bring issues in front of you, you have to use the ordinances and leave emotion out of it. So you have to look at what people want, look at the ordinances, and it's pretty clear what, what you can and can't do according to uh, Grant. So, for example, when people say that, you know, you know they want to bring water and uh, sewer into Grant, that's, that's not going to happen. It's just a matter of um, looking at what the ordinances say and what the comprehensive plan says and following those rules. It's as simple as that. So that's the unique value that I bring. Um, just follow the rules. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, rebuttals, anyone? I would like to rebut some of the comments that Mr. Lanou said. Yes. Uh, he talked about people being afraid of the city council. Um, I, I think if anyone would be afraid, they'd be afraid of being sued by Larry. Um, Larry's had numerous lawsuits against people that are trying to work for this city. Um, most recently had a federal lawsuit that was thrown out with extreme prejudice. He's also um, in the process of suing people for a, a frivolous open meeting violation. So those are the kind of things that people should be scared about. Any further rebuttals? Yes, John Rock? Would. Um, you know, I know firsthand of being sued by Larry for silly things, like Jeff said, open meeting violation. And, you know, when you're on the planning commission and you know somebody and you're saying hi to them and shaking their hand, and Larry comes in and takes a picture of you and sues you because there's four people in the room and I'm just saying hi to somebody, um, that's kind of silly. And so if anybody is, should be afraid, it's four more years of uh, that kind of behavior. <coughs> Larry? Look. Yeah, I'd like to rebut both of these gentlemen. Uh, now, this gentleman, there was a, at the planning commission, there, they were up on the screen, so was the document that they were talking about earlier this evening that happened about 20 minutes after the meeting had left. And if you go to the court documents, and you'll see that most of the lawsuits started in the city of Grant were initiated by Mr. Huber and his actions. Yes, I have countersued in my own defense. That's what you do in a legal lawsuit. And yes, I have taken the court to stop open meeting violations going on in our city. It happens routinely, and uh, they can call it frivolous. It's still being in court being decided. Uh, folks, I'm standing up for your rights, and I'm not afraid to stand up for those that will take them away. Thank you. Okay, I also would, like I had pointed out earlier, Joyce Wielander, who's taught four, had 4-H for 50 years, had a wagon in her pasture with two signs on it. She received a letter from the city attorney saying she needed to get a conditional use permit for her artistic grouping. And like the ones I'd named earlier, those people have been intimidated by city, the majority. Okay, we don't even know what happens. Half the time we can't get anything on the agenda, but all of a sudden, gee whiz, there's a full-blown proposal there to be voted on. Uh, it's crazy. We can't take things off the content agenda like the $107,000 uh, contract, and it's state law says contracts over $100,000 must have a second uh, bid with them. They violate that stuff all the time. There's all the backdoor deals. Uh, Larry and I don't get a chance to see anything until 
hopefully it's in the packet, and some things aren't in the packet, and they just bring it up. So you guys, uh, it's, it's a mess, folks. Thank you. Uh, this next question kind of drills down on the first one. Can you please describe how you intend to bring objective view, transparency, and a collaborative commitment to our frequently divided grant council? How you intend to bring this? Let's start with John Rogg. Okay, so you talked about bringing an objective view. Um, as I said before, in the, in the planning commission, you just follow the rules. Uh, I'm very objective. As an engineer, you have to be objective. You look at the data, you look at what's presented, and you make decisions based on the ordinances. You make decisions based on what the comprehensive plan says. You know, I'm not looking to rewrite anything. You follow the rules that are there. There is a process to go through to change things. But when you have things in front of you, you follow the rules. Simple as that. Thank you. Larry Leno. All right, transparency. Uh, I'll just give bring you an example. This is part of a, I guess it would be called a PowerPoint program presented at the Model Media City Council meeting on September 18th for the Rink 2 Hockey Arena. Uh, at that point, the Planning Commissioner for the City of Matamida and uh, Mr. Rogaszewski uh, said that the ice arena would be served by Grant City and Water. Uh, he has also said he has gotten approval. It was on a PowerPoint and highlighted by Mr. Rogg, Mr. Giefer, Mr. Helander, Mr. Tufty, and by our City Council, uh, highlighted by Tom Carr, Jeff Huber, and Dennis Kopp. This thing hasn't even been in front of these uh, planning commission yet for discussion or public hearing and yet they're giving its uh, approval for this uh, and and they're also saying there's no other possible uh, science uh, site available so transparency I want to stop open meeting violations and decision making is being done behind closed doors brought to our city council meeting and approved uh, and resolution is being written without prior discussion thank you Lauren Satterstrom well I've been working at this the whole time. Uh, matter of fact, April of last year, I asked the mayor, I shouted into the microphone, and I said, Mayor, are you going to allow, allow me to participate in next month's meeting? I'm frequently ignored. I've brought full-blown the, the change to the, the 32-145 three times. They wouldn't even e look at it. Our drinking water needs to be protected. I've been brought numbers of things forward. Matter of fact, McCusick Road, with the last uh, engineer, Phil Olson, I had, uh, he worked a proposal up to fix McCusick Road for $130,000 in overlay, it would last 10 years. They're spending $25,000 a year on it. It's 250 grand by the time they get done and they still have junk. Thank you. Any rebuttals? Uh, I haven't had a chance to answer. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, Jeff. So, um, I agree with, uh, what uh, John said, I mean, we need to be objective and follow the rules and participate in civil, reasonable debates. People have differences of opinion. You can have um, difference of opinion, but you should be able to work things out without resorting to all this nonsense. As far as some of the statements that Larry said, um, the judges are sent in advance. If they, they have plenty of opportunity, and I go to these the city meetings every time, they have plenty of opportunity to provide what they want on the agenda, but they refuse. They play their games, they wait to the last minute, and they try to throw something in and say, oh, there's a big conspiracy that, um, that, that I'm not being able to, to, to uh, make my uh, opinions heard. Um, as far as approval of the hockey rink, that's absurd. The saying that we, we would try to approve the hockey rink there, we have no power to approve it as individuals. That has to go through the planning commission and the and the city council. There's, it's absurd to think that we would try to, as individuals, uh, uh, provide approval for the hockey rink. Okay, now rebuttals, John. Yeah, I don't know what Larry's talking about. I have no idea. This hasn't come before the planning commission since I've been there. Um, so I don't know what he's talking about, that it's come before the planning commission or individuals, because that doesn't happen. So again, just, just he's trying to make you believes things that aren't true. Lauren Satterstrom. Okay. I, when Mr. Kiefer said that the, I don't bring things forward, that is not true. November, December, and January, I had the definition of Hydrovac written out and the amendment, and it was in the packet. Three months in a row. And uh, I believe uh, 
if I can remember the quote from Mr. Carr, he said, oh, that's above our pay grade. I'm sorry. Keeping our drinking water safe is not above anybody's pay grade when it comes to dealing with wastewater. We're all on wells. Uh, we already have sewer and water into the, into the school. I don't want to see it go any further. Plus, they keep pushing the envelope. They allow houses to be built in, in divisions that shouldn't be, like on Keswick, the third house, the third one back. That should have never been built there. But we have to follow the rules, and these guys always aren't. Things just magically appear, like the hockey arena. It wasn't supposed to be. 100 by 3, 300 foot hockey arena up in a farm. They said, oh, withdraw your CUP and build it anyway. Horse barns are big. Well, I'm sorry. That isn't agricultural. Thank you. Over here, yep. Larry Lanou. I'd like to uh, rebut their statement. He says, how did that get on there? These are the pages. Go to the Matamidi City Council meeting, September 18th. Look at the PowerPoint program on it for the rink hockey arena. They're highlighted. Uh, the person that have already approved the hockey arena, it says they're going to use uh, uh, sewer and water from the city of Grant. As far as me putting stuff on the agenda item, uh, I come well prepared, send the stuff into the city clerk beforehand. But it takes, a, according to the city's policies and procedures, it takes a majority vote from the city council members to add something. So if I add something to an agenda, and an issue that has come up in, since the last council meeting, it can't be done. I prepare good documentation. Our city clerk is not accurate in saying that I didn't prepare it. I will provide you with the emails. And in fact, it's part of the lawsuit that we're trying to ab stop abuse of the consent agenda and abuse of setting agenda. Yeah. I would like to rebut. So first of all, Larry, you're bringing up the city of Matamidi. Does, we're, we're talking grant here. So all that stuff about the city of Matamidi Council really doesn't apply here. Um, the hot green is going in Grant. Second, so regarding Lauren's um, comment about um, what Tom Carr supposedly said about water, well, I, everyone wants um, safe water to drink. That's, that's silly to, to say that, suggest that someone wouldn't want that. And I think you're taking it out of context. I think what Tom was saying is that there are other uh, organizations that are responsible for ensuring safe water. It's outside of the, the city of Grant's responsibility to ensure that there's safe water. The like FPCA, there's that. plenty of... I've worked... Tom, excuse me. We, we've all had one rebuttal. And now we'll move on to the next question, which shifts gears a little bit. And the first to answer is Lauren Setterstrom. Do you think that Grant has excessive legal fees? Well, I would agree with that. Uh, I know uh, what uh, Larry went through. He's been here for 30 years. He had grandfather rights. He's had a horse farm for 30 years. And they went after him for getting a conditional use permit. He, I saw the 1983 change when they went, changed the rules. And they said anyone that was in, in uh, any agricultural organization that was in operation in 1981 was grandfathered in would be allowed to be used this the uh, the council majority came after them and they spent 60 or seventy thousand dollars forcing him to get a conditional use permit when he'd been here for 30 some years and he was grandfathered in and uh, then uh, it, it's just ridiculous and they're saying we're doing it guess again you look at the money that's been expended, and a majority has been from the, those people trying to intimidate the, the minority and the, the minor, minority supporters. Thank you. Jeff Kiefer. Um, so, yeah, first of all, the legal fees, most of the legal fees that we're encountering is because of Mr. Sederstrom and Mr. Lanou. Um, as, as far as the CUP, Larry was asked t several times to get a CUP and because he did not he refused to which I don't understand what's the big deal of, of um, applying for a CUP when he was asked so that incurred the city forty thousand dollars just for that in legal fees alone when he finally did um, get a CUP in front of it it passed there's no problem but the fact that he didn't do it um, it's just typical uh, disruptive behavior by by Larry okay Larry Lanou next oh boy I can handle this one Okay, high legal fees. Mr. Uh, Huber threatened me with censure within two minutes of being sworn in. Took me to court over censure. The district court had proven I was denied my due process. Uh, 
my conditional use permit, he tried to have my wife and I, well, my wife incarcerated indefinitely. He asked for $40,000 in legal fees. The judge threw that out, folks. It's in the documents. So, yes, we do have high legal fees. I've got a picture here if you'd like to. It's a picture of a little 3x3 three three gopher sign. Joyce Wheelander had it in her yard. Uh, the city went after her, threatened her legal because she had a 3x3 three three gopher sign. Go to Axel. There's 20 yard signs out there. Our city's arbitrary and capricious. They've lost in court before on that, and they're going to continue lose, using it, losing as long as they do not apply their uh, zoning and their ordinances fairly and evenly to all citizens of Grant. Thank you. John Rogg. So, yes, our legal fees are too high. And I can't, you know, I know that in the four years that um, our esteemed uh, people have been on the city council, the legal fees are in about $170,000 range for four years for taxpayer money. But I don't know, you know, this is a he said, she said, it's always going to be that way. But I do know when I'm in the planning commission, um, in the planning commission rules, it says city current city council members may observe public hearings held at the planning commission meetings, but shall not comment during meeting or public hearings. Any comments by a city council member that was within 1,320 feet of the property you know, they may submit their uh, questions. They constantly want to talk at, pl at planning commission meetings and public comments. So if they don't follow those rules, then how can we believe them on anything else? Okay, comment? Okay, rebuttals? Yes, Mr. Keeper. Uh, it's obviously, it's beyond the copious of your diminutive comprehension to understand what grandfather rights are. A grandfather right is, if you've moved here before the, the document changes and you become a city, you have the right to exercise that because you were here way before the rules changed. So Mr. Lanoue has been here for 38 years. He has 30 acres. He's got, puts horses on there. So he is quote unquote grandfathered in. Coming after him was nothing but a witch hunt and a retribution. Absolutely, because that's what grandfather rights are. If you, oh, I can't believe it. So, Any so, further? Jeff, yeah, I want to, Ronald, um, I, I really want to know, actually I don't, I can tell you, there is, um, Larry did not suffer any harm from being asked to comply with a CUP, nothing. And as far as the, the comments about um, Mr. Huber, so Mr. Huber is not running for city council, he's already mayor. I think you made it very clear that you have a, a, a personal vendetta against um, Mr. Huber and that's the, the basis behind all your frivolous lawsuits. And this is why you need to be replaced on the city council. Larry Lanou. Yeah, Mr. Rogg, he, he's correct. I did come to a uh, recent planning commission meeting and I sat in there and they had some good information going on and I stood up to speak. If it's a public hearing, I did not give up my right to speak. When our city, two days after being elected, produces policies and procedures without council input, uh, two days after being elected, uh, to restrict our participation. I did not give up my right as a citizen of Grant to speak at a public hearing. Uh, Mr. Rogg denied my right and that is uh, why you're being in court, is because they do not follow statute, just as they denied the use of the city hall. Why do you think when they allowed the Gateway Trail Association and Woodland Acres use of that building, uh, Lori Swanson said it, it was illegal, they wrote the policy in there, and now they've just changed it now. Uh, in fact, they've re redone and amended our policy and procedures six times uh, to restrict our participation. Thank you. John Rogg. City of Grant rules. That's what I cited. Current city council members may not speak at public comments in the planning commission. Period. Like I said, engineer, follow the rules. These gentlemen don't. They both spoke at that meeting. No, I did not. No, I well, did not. You, you, you tried. Well, that's the same. You, you, you came up and you wanted to speak, and I said, please step aside. And I did. Please do not answer right. so, when anyhow, someone's turn. Anyhow, just follow the rules. That's all I'm saying. We'll move on to the next question, and the first to answer is John Rogg. Uh, do you want Grant Roads blacktopped and all residents share the cost? <laughs> that's 
a good question. Um, no, our current system of allowing the residents to uh, to vote if they want the road blacktopped and have it uh, put in their uh, uh, taxes is, is, or, or in their property taxes is a great thing. I don't want our taxes raised. You know, why would we raise taxes for everybody so one road can be paved that maybe you don't use? So no, I wouldn't do that, um, and I wouldn't raise taxes for something like that. We want to keep our taxes low, let the system works as, as it currently works, and I think it works fine. Larry Leno. Um, yes, I, I, I do believe our blacktop roads, we need a perpetual road maintenance program that applies to hard surface and, and gravel. Uh, Mr. Rogg, he doesn't believe it because he didn't go through the process. He paved his own road a quarter mile up to his house without going through the process. He stepped across that line. He doesn't follow our guidelines. Go to the blacktop road, folks. When you go to these meetings, you're putting neighbor against neighbor. You got retired people that can't afford the deals, uh, our, our, our blacktop roads. We use bonding authority. We don't need to do it. The maintenance costs alone will save the cost of that road. It's time we step up and act like a city Many of these people get out. Mr. Raw gets out, he drives on other roads. He drives on county roads, state roads, and the gravel roads. No, it's time we all share in our road system. In fact, I don't know what else we're paying our taxes for. That's the only infrastructure we have, and it's time to step up. Thank you. Lauren Sedestrom. Okay. <clears throat> I do not believe we should pave all our roads. I repeat that. However, there's some equity issues. For example, I'll take Woodland Acres, but I live down the road from there. There's 70 residents there, okay? They have their own roads, but they all use Joliet to get out of there. That road is ridiculous. Uh, there is a, a strip, 300-foot strip of pavement in front of uh, the Mr. Huber's and Mr. Carr's house that's been in place for almost 10 years. There isn't a chip in it. I I advocated the same thing, came up with a proposal to fix McCusick Road for $130,000 in, in the long run, <coughs> saving us $120,000 over 10 years, and they wouldn't even consider it. We need to fix our main arteries so our citizens can get in and out of there, and I don't know how we're going to do it. We have to come up with an with a aspect because it doesn't make sense for 12 people to pay for the artery when there's 70 people living off it. Jeff Giefer. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to um, just quickly address Larry's thing about bonding. So do you think bonding means free money? That money is still going to have to be coming out of our, our pocket. And as far as equal money set aside um, to roads, that we, we do have a perpetual road maintenance plan that includes equal amount of money for the various roads. Um, our current road policy works. We're able to maintain our roads in a very cost-effective manner while allowing citizens to have input on the types of roads they want. For example, the special road projects where they're initiated by 75% of the, the citizens in the neighborhood, and if they want to um, blacktop the road, then they can. Um, unfortunately, though, as a city of less than 5,000 residents, we do not qualify for state gas tax money. I met with our state rep, Kathy Lomer, and a few other citizens, and um, she is going to uh, try to take that up. and make it more equitable for smaller cities like Grant to get more of that da gas tax money. If we have that, then we'll be able to um, really improve our roads. All right. Any rebuttals here? John Rogg. I don't know where Larry is getting his information. Again, he just tries to lie. I went through the process. The city council voted on it, and I, it was gone, th and it went through the city engineers. I don't know where Larry is saying I do it on my own and don't follow the rules. That's impossible. So, Larry, stop lying. Please, don't, don't, don't do this to the citizens of Grant, please. And let's, let's keep personal attacks out okay. of this discussion. Thank you. Uh, the, Lauren Sederson okay. wants to rebut. <clears throat> yes, this road policy doesn't work. Look at Joliet Avenue. We're paying 53 cents out of every dollar for the schools. I proposed uh, that we raise it about $25 uh, a, for, for residents to kick into a fund to fix some of the main arteries. Look at McCusick, look at Joliet, look at Kimbrough. They're falling apart. And all we're doing is we're putting patching. It's costing us more to put patches continually 
on the roads than it would be to fix them right. I don't want to see us spend a lot of money, but what I'm saying, we could use, you know, patching the same road over and over. You're paying basically for labor because you have to send a crew out there. There's travel time. They have to go out there and fix it, patch it, and you still have a crummy road. If they would do like they did in front of the Mr. Carr's and Mr. Huber's house, just put a brief overlay, that drive by there, it's beautiful. It's lasted for almost 10 years and there isn't a chip in it. We can do it economically. We just have to get off our butts and do it. I'd like to be back. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Greeter. Um, Mr. Sedgstrom talks about um, a, a, a plan. I have, not, I have been to almost every city council meeting and he can sit here and say, like, we need to do this. Well, what, what has he been doing the last four years? I've not seen him bring forth any, any kind of plan that would make sense um, with any financial um, you know, attributes tied to it. So I just I, outlined it. Well, you haven't said it in the, you haven't brought it f to, to the city council. Phil Olson, the engineer, so did. You have already rebutted. <laughs> Larry Leno. Okay, uh, Mr. Gee, if you asked me, is bonding money free? No, it isn't. Obvious it isn't. It's a, it's a source of income you fund over a period of time, just like the mortgage on your house. Uh, you say, have we brought it forward? Yes, I've been denied the right to form a road committee and use of the bill, town hall to put together a steering committee to develop a, a comprehensive road committee. I've been down to the League of Minnesota Cities. I have lobbied down there personally myself for state aid for uh, local roads. That is why the city of Grant received over $60,000 in there. In fact, I brought the resolution into the city office, and for doing that, a, a city, a Washington County Sheriff showed up because I came to the city office and brought a resolution from the League of Minnesota Cities, which netted our city over $60,000 and is a continuing program. Now, Mr. Huber tried to take credit for that, but go down to the League of Minnesota Cities, see he brought in the resolution. You see, I've been down there, and yes, I have been down to the Capitol, met with uh, both Karen Housley and uh, uh, Representative uh, Lomer several times and address this you. issue. Thank you. We'll turn to another question, and it will begin with Jeff Kiefer. Should solar gardens be permitted in Grant? Well, there's a lot of gray area around um, how solar community, um, excuse me, not community solar gardens, I would call them commercial solar operations. There's a lot of gray area in how that would uh, fit into our current comp plan. So as I can say as a, a council member, I would um, be very diligent in looking at the facts and being objective in, in um, making sure that our comp plan is adhered to when, when talking about um, community or um, corporate um, solar operations. Thank you. Uh, Lauren Satterstrom. Solar gardens. Uh, it went through the planning commission six to one, the ordinance, but when it came to the city council, it was uh, the solar gardens were bordered down. Why? Because the person proposing it was Joyce Wielander. I saw the plan. It was going to be 20 acres. The small solar garden was going to be surrounded completely by shrubs, trees, and brushes on eight acres. The other 22 acres was going to be seeded for pollinators. That's something's very important. We have to maintain our pollinator population. I farm. I know. It's important to have pollinators. And again, this is another example of uh, striking out against someone because they didn't get supported. I think, and there's, by the way, there's only three places in Grant that they could have one of these solar gardens, the, the larger ones, and uh, Joyce Wielander's one of it, so it, it's, 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 it's just ridiculous that they would, it, when it went through the planning commission, that they would strike that part out at the city council. Uh, Larry Leno. Uh, yes, I believe it is. Our comprehensive plan allows it. It's a part of a right to farm. Uh, we, the mayor put a moratorium once they learned that Joyce Wheelander was interested in it. Uh, we have a beekeeper in our audience today. I, I think it would serve our community uh, fine to have that solar garden out there. Uh, our city council denied that application without any findings of fact. That puts our city in jeopardy of the legal. Because right now, I've been getting calls from the organization that represents that. And uh, Commissioner Fran Myron also recommended that they go after the city because they did not give any findings of facts for the denial of that application. 
It is your right to farm. It is in part of our comprehensive plan to keep Grant rural. Uh, simply, Mr. Rogg says when she came out there, she says, are, is a Grant going to benefit from this? And the truth of the matter is, it's not whether Grant benefits. Joyce had the ability to retire on that income. Thank you. John Rogg. Um, so the, the misnomer, it's not a solar garden. It is a commercial solar generating plant. When you have that many solar panels, it's a commercial, and it is commercial, because that goes into the grid, so now it's commercial. So it's a commercial solar generating plant. Let's call it what it is. It's got nothing to do with gardens. Um, we have a commercial district in Grant, and you, know, you could put a commercial solar generating plant in the commercial district that we currently have. Um, you know, we have an agriculture, we have a, uh, a, a very nice way of living in Grant, and I don't think seeing uh, this many solar panels is going to help anybody. It certainly isn't going to help the people of Grant. And this is why people from other cities want it here, because we have this much land. But our job is not to, pro to provide this, these people uh, abilities to do this. You know, Joyce, you could say Joyce, she could do horse farms, she could do other things. Solar, commercial solar generating plants don't have a place in Grant. Thank you. Rebuttal? Rebuttals. Okay. Uh, I'm sure most of you people are familiar with the concept of selective perception. The, this is not a major solar garden. It's a minor solar garden. It would be completely encased. The other thing that's very interesting, he's babbling about commercial. Two or three years ago, the city council passed an ordinance that they could put supper clubs on county roads, and we almost had one in Manning and 62nd. Why don't we just take a big stick and start poking the Met Council and see if we can wake them up, and, you know, because water and sewer was across the road. You know, it's the same thing with the uh, hockey arena. They, the, the, uh, they said, oh, you take away your CUP. You don't need a CUP for a hockey arena. Those horse farms have big places. Well, horse farms are agricultural. Hockey arenas aren't. It goes against our comp plan, and they've been doing things like the hockey arena, the supper clubs against the comp plan, and gee whiz, nobody seems to notice or care. I want to keep Grant rural. I farm. I've got 43 acres. I'm an active farmer. I don't want to see water and sewer because it would bankrupt me. Thank you. Other rebuttal? Yes. Larry Lanou. Okay, uh, yes, getting back to your solar farm. Uh, both realtor uh, Tom Carr, Jeff Huber, and Mr. Rogg said they all prefer houses over solar farms. And they would rather see housing development. They got one going across the road. If you keep putting housing development on housing development, you will bring in Met Council Public Sewer and Water, which is written in against our comprehensive plan. Yes, solar farming would benefit our community, and it does not require sewer and water. It has no adverse impact on our city. And Mr. Uh, Rogg says he's concerned that Joyce will make money. Well, guess what? She has a right to farm. She has a right to retire, and I support her right. I also support her coming back to the city council and revisiting this and that they refund her money for the another $3,400 for that application that they're charging her again. Mr. Kiefer? Um, I think it's ridiculous to suggest that there's a personal vendetta against um, an applicant. And I, I know the, the members of the council um, that's just ridiculous to suggest that. So that the kind of um, vitriol and, and personal attacks is just, it's just what's killing us right now. We've got to get away from that. And it's interesting that uh, Mr. Lanou mentions the Met Council when about seven days after he was um, elected to the City Council, he applied to be on the Met Council. You've got to ask yourself, well, why is that? Does he really want to keep um, city and water sewer out of grant, or do he have some other interest in mind? Mr. Rogg? All right. Uh, this next question goes first to Lauren Sederstrom. Do you support any public sewer and water from Met Council? Absolutely not. I would be very happy to see the school district given back to Montemedi so we don't have it. We do have sewer and water in Grant. It goes to the high school. It goes, and now they're proposing the uh, on, on the ice rink. 
the, the hockey rink. And what's really interesting about that whole concept is there is a restrictive covenant in the deed conveyed by wastewater management that nothing can ever be built on the municipal waste dump site. They, they already broke through the top and the bottom, and uh, they found it was 30 feet deep, not 20. Uh, they're having issues at Wildwood School. There's already 53 children that have been taken out because they were having headaches and nosebleeds, and two teachers have cancer. We have some serious concerns. There's also another 3M municipal waste dump across the street, and I've talked with the MPCA. I actually talked with the office in Chicago uh, and trying to get me information, but in 87, uh, they, didn't, they didn't check for PFCs. They didn't have the tests. So there's a lot of stuff going on around here we need to be concerned about. Thank you. Jeff Giefer. Um, yeah, so I am against bringing any public sewer or water into Grant other than what is necessary for our schools. And unlike Mr. Sederstrom, I do not believe that we need to annex part of our um, city to Mata Um So that... Um, I'm against any annexation, and I, don't th I mean, that's why we became a city in the first place, is to prevent annexation. Um, as far as the, the, the school and, and toxic waste dumps and this and that, I mean, that's ridiculous. There's um, no higher incidence of cancer. Um, it's actually the lower incidence of cancer in that community than, than the rest of the state. And the MPCA and all the, you know, applicable government organizations have have signed off on that and there's doing continued testing. So that's a uh, uh, hyperbole to, to say that. Thank you, John Rogg. Yes, I would not uh, support public sewer and water going into Grant. Um, obviously the high school in Wildwood already have it because they are schools, but uh, no extensions, nothing, nothing across the street, nowhere should there be any more sewer and water. And if I'm city council, I wouldn't allow it. Thank you. Larry Lanou. All right, Mr. Giefer, you did it. Say I signed up for Met Council for the committee. If you're on city council, the first thing they do is they send you an application if you'd be interested. Yes, that's where you find out where change is happening. I volunteered to sit on a committee there. I also volunteered for a kid committee for 3M dump sites to uh, address the dump sites that's within three-tenths of a mile of the Wildwood Elementary School. You say there are no conditions out there and that the government's done. If you've read the environmental assessment report, and I know I've only got a minute to do it, but it states that uh, there's a 3M dump site within two mile, or three mile, three-tenths of a mile of that site, that there's an inherent risk of the construction workers, that there'll be an inherent risk of the kids in there. Our city wrote a resolution saying we don't need an environmental impact and they don't have that ability because the local governing unit happens to be the Rice Creek watershed. Our city didn't have the right to write that resolution. Rebuttals. Rebuttal. Yeah. I would like to rebut. The only involvement that a city of Grant had in that was the grading permits. That's it. So I don't know what all, all this other stuff you're talking about is. That's nonsense. Lawrence had a okay, show. in regard to testing, I recently attended, I, I, I go to several uh, workshops at uh, the watershed districts. I attended a workshop at Rice Creek. Jenny Yingling from the uh, Minnesota Department of Health submitted the, the testing for the environmental uh, assessment worksheet. They were from 2011. They're not following their conditional use permit. They're supposed to be wells on the school ground, and they're supposed to be tested every other year. To my knowledge, it's only been tested once, and that's since 2011. We have some problems, folks, here. It's, it's kind of like the, the blind leading the deaf, dumb, and stupid. Any further rebuttals? You've, you've... No, I've only spoken. Okay, go ahead. So, I thank you. Uh, Yes, Mr. Giefer, if you wrote the environmental uh, EAW, and it was a 1,500-page document, I, I doubt that you did read it. But some of the highlights on there, uh, once it states that the uh, states that the proposed Rink 2 site building on top of a former dump creates inherent environmental concerns for site workers and the public during construction of the facility and for future building occupants. It is the duty of the city councilman to protect the health, safety, and welfare. And that includes the kids that are coming in that future building. And our city went and uh, they knew all this beforehand. Uh, 
our city had a council majority, and all you have to do is show up with the school district. They knew they'd get it voted. We traded in a good planning uh, commission for a, a new planner, that a boutique planner that would fit this school on a dump site. And so I, I'm here to tell you the documents in that EAW is a 1,500-page document. If you've read it or you understand how it was proposed, our city ordered it. And yes, we do have concerns, but we don't have the right to uh, 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 re rely a uh, environmental impact statement. Stop. Are you running a meeting, Jeff? Thank you. John Rogg, do you have a rebuttal? I do not. All right. Next question goes first to Larry Lanou. Did you support the Charter Commission? And do you think a charter would benefit the city of Grant? Absolutely. I sat on that charter commission. Uh, our mayor petitioned it, said it would be beneficial to the city. One of the things that it would have done, it would have said it would record in audiovisual the meetings in its entirety. Citizens would be allowed to use city-owned facilities. The, the city uh, shall not allow any form of public sewer. Uh, in fact, it, it prohibited putting any public sewer in two places in the charter. But the per people opposing it uh, were allowed to lie and mislead the citizens of Grant. This would have stopped Met Council. Uh, folks, it would have been the best thing for your city. It, it would have it addressed the road issues. It was a good document. It should be revisited. Uh, and uh, I, I wish the citizens of Grant would have read the document and understood it before they voted. Thank you. John Rogg. Uh, this was voted on by the citizens of Grant. I trust them and their uh, ability to read things, and they voted on it, and it was uh, rejected. That's all you have to say. Jeff Giefer. Um, I was, um, in, in one way, I was very thankful for the, the Charter Commission that it came up, um, because it's what got me involved in learning more about my community, what was going on. When I saw that, I had a lot of questions, and I asked around. And when I got the answer I was looking for, I decided it was not the best thing for us. There's no, there's no reason to have another layer of government um, for a city of our size. And um, it got voted down, and I was thankful for that. Lauren Satterstrom. <coughs> well, I was <coughs> familiar with it because I taped them so, so they'd be able to go on uh, Channel 16. I was in that little room in there. <clears throat> and we had two prominent attorneys on the Charter Commission. And what I got from them, Mr. Rogoshevsky and Mr. Dorsey, that the Charter would have given Grant a stronger foothold against the Met Council. And so from my perspective, anything that we can do to keep the Met Council out of the city of Grant I'm absolutely for. I mean, we have to keep it out there. Uh, let's face it, I'm biased. I've got 43 acres. I've got roads on three sides. It would decimate me. I'd become an instant, instantly bankrupt. So I don't want to see Grant Sewer and Water come in, but I would like to see some, some, the, the process smooth out. Rebuttals? Larry Lanou. Uh, I do have the resolution for the charter. It says that, uh, and, and this was drafted by our, our, our mayor, it says the charter form of government may provide the city with greater flexibility to make changes uh, and address the needs and concerns of the residents. A charter may allow the city to operate more efficiently with greater response to the needs of the residents. The city of Grant desires to have a charter commission appointed by the district court. The uh, deems in the best interest city to petition the district court and it shall consist of nine members. Uh, then, resolution 2011 states that all five of the council members should be on the charter, and he named five names also to be sitting on there. I petitioned the district court to allow all citizens of Grant apply for that position. Uh, when the mayor did not get his nine positions out of the ten that he submitted, he denied the right of the Charter Commission, which he petitioned the court to become, the right to meet in our own city hall. The Charter Commission was held here. Thank and you. so they did that in, in a misleading. Uh, Thank you. Any further? Everybody. Rebuttal? Jeff Giefer. Just about everything you just heard was false. <laughs> Want to read the resolution, Jeff? Uh, please. No back and forth here. Further? Lauren Satterstrom? <laughs> yes. 
I followed it very closely. Uh, and the, the charter was instituted by our then mayor, Mr. Carr. They petitioned the court to do that, okay? Well, how can that be false? We can show, you know, I have so many clips from doing the All Around Grant Show. By the way, you can see on the Grant Reporter, a lot of, I'm the canary in the coal mine, for folks. I'm the one that brought the MPCA out with Larry to shut down the Hydrovac. Oh, it, it, you know, they don't care about our well water. Wake up and smell the coffee, folks. We have some serious problems here. We have kind of a, a do-nothing group that just hands it over to the professionals and, oh, what do you got, to, what do you got this week? It's ridiculous. John Rogg? I'm just going to say that I trust the judgment of the citizens when they vote for things, you know, just the same as when they are going to vote for city council. I trust their judgment. Either, either they'll vote for me or they won't. So I trust your judgment and your ability to decide the, the facts. And that is about all the time we have for questions, although there were quite a few more. So I suggest you collar your candidates on the way out and so we have ask, closing statements. ask them personally. Yes, we will do closing statements now, and we will begin <coughs> with Jeff Keith, uh, Lauren, Lauren Sutterson. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. This is not the friendly community I moved into 25 years ago to farm. There were no lawsuits and intimidation against residents. 4-H <coughs> was kicked out of the town hall after, four, after 50 years, other groups also. Ordinances have been passed to erode our comp plan. Procedures have changed to limit participation of the minority. The SAF prepares ordinance changes without the direction of the council or just the mayor or on their own. There is a failing road policy. And like I said before, Woodland Acres is 70 homes, but the 12 and Joliet are supposed to fix the road. Okay, contracts over 100 grand have been placed in the consent agenda, not allowed to be discussed. Uh, I already talked about the Hydrovac. When Sunnybrook neighborhood was flooding and they wanted to discuss it at next month's meeting, Larry and I have attended <coughs> workshop with several of the work work watersheds, and we worked with them to alleviate the flooding. Uh, I also have lobbied at the state capitol for seven years, several years to protect grants interests. If you want to see more information, go to www.thegrantreporter, and I do uh, evaluate each meeting after it's done. Thank you. John Rogg. So I'd like to take some time to reiterate the differences and approaches you heard this morning. I'm an issues-driven person. I'm going to be respectful to everyone while enforcing the ordinances as written and the comprehensive plan. When you apply these rules fairly to everyone, you don't have to worry about playing favorites or worry about letting one person do something that now becomes the precedent that others will want to do as well. Let's keep grant country. Let's keep the 10-acre average and 5-acre minimum lot size. Uh, let's make sure we keep our taxes low and the, and, and the great services uh, for our citizens. Let's focus on the issues facing grant and be respectful for the sake of our next generation because they're watching us and we need to lead by example. Please vote on November 6th and please vote for me, John Rogg. Thanks. Thank you. Larry Lanou. Um, yes, I'd like your continued support. As many people know that I was a founder of the Grant Restoration Project, the Grant Heritage Days Tractor Parade. Uh, I've lobbied at your capital to get you state funding for your roads. I mean, I, I've been, I've actually accomplished that. Uh, I will not be bullied by Mr. Carr and Mr. Huber. I will stand up for the rights of the citizens to farm, stable, and protect your rural heritage. That's, I moved out here 30-some years ago. This is not the city that we have. Uh, Mr. Giefer uh, and Mr. Rogg out here, they're recent people, as Mr. Huber. They don't understand the importance and the legacy of our community. I've been here for 38 years, and folks, it's not the same. I will continue fighting for the citizens' right to hunt, farm, and fish in the city of Grant and keep our rural community. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Giefer. Um, thank you again for your time today. Uh, I think it's um, pretty clear to a lot of people it's time for some fresh new faces on the City Council. Um, I want to work together with you and for you and work together with the other members of the Council to keep our city rural, um, follow the rules, adhere to our comp plan, and just put an end to the, put an end to the, the dysfunction that's going on in our city right now. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone just to watch uh, the last 
three city council meetings on our city's website, just the first five minutes, and make up your own mind and see what you think. It's time for a change. We need stability, civility, and common sense so we can get back to doing our work for the city. For more information about my views, please visit my website at geeferforgrant.com. I appreciate your support, and I also ask that you support the candidate that shares similar core beliefs, my fellow planning commissioner, John Rogg. We both really appreciate your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you to the candidates for your participation and forthright answers. Suburban Community Channels for recording this. You'll be able to see it on Channel 16. City of Matamidi for their venue, League of Women Voters volunteers, and also a volunteer from Century College. And especially thank you to you, the audience, for your interest and your attention. Don't forget to vote on November 6th.